This is the Valley Today. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us here on the Valley today. My name is Ashlyn Hill and I'm Alex Larson. We're following breaking news this morning out of West Fargo after several vehicles broke out on fire at a local auto shop. The West Fargo Fire Department says they were called to Eagle Auto Parts just before 145 this morning for a report of a structure fire. But when crews got there, they found three cars on fire. Officials say crews were able to contain the fires quickly. There was no damage to the building itself. The cause of the fire, though, currently under investigation. We don't know the extent of the damages quite yet, but we do know no one was injured in the incident. 601 here on the Valley today. Time now for a check in of our weather forecast. We're sending things right on over to meteorologist Lisa Green. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today we have some flakes out there and even some drizzle on the way for later today and some wind as well. So some things to track out for you. Uh, morning drive expect to have pretty good conditions. We're giving it a one out of five for tough travel. It shouldn't be much of a problem at all, but there is that possibility for a passing flake or a sprinkle here this morning. Temperatures looking pretty good into the 30s and the wind isn't that strong yet. So uh, most of us seeing some quiet conditions. Excuse me. Looking at our Lake Park, Minnesota DOT cam along Highway 10. And you can see a few of these flakes streaming by the camera view. So we are seeing some of those flakes, but again, they're not reducing our visibility too much. Might have you turn it on the windshield wiper for a moment or two this morning. And this narrow band, we were talking about this yesterday as we were uh, looking through our forecast model. Here it is, and it's moving to the southeast. You can see it's more into Lake Lakes Country right now, Detroit Lakes, back down toward just pushing into Fergus Falls around the Rothsay area along I-94, and then back down toward Wapaton Breckenridge, and that line will continue eastward. Fargo Moorhead, when this passed through, it was just a few minor flakes and that was about it. So again, this is not a big uh, precip producer. Looking at our current conditions, we are in the 20s and 30s. It's 37 degrees this morning in Fargo, so a nice mild start. It's clear in Devil's Lake and Jamestown uh, where we've had that clearing going on. Eventually we'll see more of that as the day goes on, especially this morning until we move into the afternoon hours. So looking at our planner today, Expect to see a decrease in clouds for Fargo. We'll get some sunshine into midday and then mostly cloudy and the wind starts to pick up. We'll have temperatures in the upper 40s to right around 50 this afternoon for Fargo. A little cooler north. And here's a look at our wind gusts out of the north and getting into some 30s by midday and into the afternoon. A couple of us could see 40 miles per hour. So a little active here. No big things going on, but the wind will have to keep an eye on. And in addition to that, you might see some snow or some light rain for your evening drive home, so we'll have more on that to come. You know, things are looking up otherwise, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, temperatures are steadily climbing this week, and by the time we're ending the week, it should feel really nice. Nice. Sounds good. Thank you, Lisa. New this morning, a Fargo man has been arrested for terrorizing after a report of a man holding a rifle on top of a parking ramp. Fargo PD says it happened around 930 last night. They say officers formed a perimeter around that parking ramp and found a man holding a BB gun and a hand rifle, a handgun and a BB rifle. Both weapons were replicas designed to look like real firearms. 23 year old Tyson Oka was arrested for terrorizing and booked in the Cass County Jail. Police say the investigation is still ongoing, but there does not appear to be any threat to the public at this time. Also new this morning, formal charges have been filed against a man accused of murder in Laramore. 43 year old Troy Larson facing charges including murder, attempted murder and seven counts of reckless endangerment. Authorities say on March 23rd, Larson shot at a man and a woman inside of a home, striking the man. The woman reportedly ran from the home and was able to call 911. 64 year old Jamie Holweger was pronounced dead on the scene. Authorities also say during that arrest, Larson shot multiple rounds at officers and was later shot himself. He was then placed in the handcuffs and treated on scene before being taken to Altru Hospital, where he now remains. Larson's initial court appearance in Grand Forks County Court is set for nine this morning. A 51 year old man from Crookston is severely injured after running into a pillar on I-29 head on. Highway Patrol says he was driving southbound at a high rate of speed last night when he drove off the road near Reynolds and hit the pillar. An ambulance bringing that man to All True Hospital. Highway Patrol still currently investigating that crash. A Becker County woman facing charges accused of attacking another woman with a shovel on Easter Sunday. Law enforcement say they believe Janet Hanks got in a fight with a victim for taking her ex-boyfriend's side during an argument. They say she also kicked a deputy. She faces misdemeanor assault and interfering with the peace officer charges.
A Vergas man was arrested after the Outer Tail County Sheriff's Office says he broke into a Vergas bar, Billy's Corner Bar and Grill, and stole a gun. It happened early last Wednesday morning. The Sheriff's Office says Donald Merrill Jr. smashed out the front window of the bar, and the business security video shows Merrill smash out a glass showcase containing a 9mm handgun, which was set to be raffled off. Investigators recovered the stolen handgun and arrested Merrill for first-degree burglary and a felon in possession of a firearm. Murder charges filed yesterday against 28-year-old Michael Diedrich. His charges come after the death of 22-year-old Ethan Larson, who was victim of a deadly stabbing last week outside of a popular South Fargo bar. Recently filed court documents say a bartender at Southtown Poorhouse overheard the two arguing and asked them to leave. He says the two agreed to take that fight outside. Then when the bartender went to break up the fight outside, he says he saw Larson throwing up blood. He says he ran over to Larson to apply pressure to the stab wound on his chest. Larson later died in the hospital. Yesterday, Diedrich's bail was set at $1 million, despite his lawyer requesting a lower bail be set to $100,000. Diedrich is due back in court May 15th. A Fargo man has been arrested and faces four sex crimes against children charges. And that's now in a case that we know is tied to a local former school leader. Aaron Doss is charged in Cass County Court with two counts of promoting a sexual performance by a minor and two counts of child pornography. Now, according to the charging document, investigators discovered a Snapchat account belonging to Doss while they were looking into Ryan Barron. You may remember Barron as the former Midcota Public School Superintendent, who's also been charged with several counts of child pornography. On that account, Doss was allegedly sharing pictures of a 12 year old girl from Fargo with Baron. They also had discussions about other underage children, specifically girls, also from Fargo. Gasps and cries filling a Wisconsin courtroom yesterday as prosecutors showed cell phone video of a deadly stabbing of a teenager. Nikolai Mew is accused of killing a teenager and stabbing four others on the Apple River in July of 2022. He says it was in self-defense, but Jonah Kaplan has more on the developments from inside that courtroom. Are you serious? Is it real? The shouting from July 2022 reverberated even louder in April 2024. Prosecutors playing this three minute cell phone video, they say captured most of the deadly altercation between Nikolai Mew and a group of teenagers on the Apple River. Ryan Nelson was the first among those teens to take the stand and describe the chaotic scene. Looked like he struck her definitively with his right hand. Mew, seen in the video holding a knife, is accused of intentionally killing 17 year old Isaac Schumann and the attempted murder of four others. During an intense cross-examination, defense attorneys challenged Nelson's memory of events. Nelson, are you aware that um, Isaac Schumann's uh, blood alcohol concentration was a point two one nine? The opening testimony Sorry, capping an weapon. early back and forth during opening statements, each side pushing competing narratives to the jury. I close the trial, you'll see that these were senseless and horrific acts of violence and all Nikolai had to do was walk away. Only reasonable hypothesis in this case is he feared for his life. That belief. Jonah Kaplan reporting, if convicted, Mew could be sentenced to life in prison. Up next, meteorologist Lisa Green is in with a check of our forecast. That's next.